Well, good morning and here today on the Rusty Glove Box, what we're going to do is a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time and uh, I've just decided going to go ahead and get started on it. Uh, give you a little hint, let me show you my thermometer on the wall. It's almost 90 degrees already and it's still morning, but anyway. Let's go on forward and let me show you what I bought. Well, this is what I bought. I bought a Mr. Cool do-it-yourself 24K combination heat pump and air conditioner. Uh, it's a little self-contained unit. Uh, in the long box, that's where your upper unit or your inside unit would be, and you'll mount it on the wall, and I'll show you how I'm going to mount mine. Uh, the lower unit, of course, that's a condenser. It goes on the outside. One thing that makes this really unique on the, uh, the DIY part of it is uh, the hose kit. The hose is a soft stainless steel braided type hose, very flexible. Uh, it's covered and everything. Um, you don't have to do anything as far as making hoses. Uh, the hose kit's 25 foot long, uh, so you have to deal with that. But uh, Anyway, let me show you how all this works. You just undo your uh, band straps and you can just lift the box right off the top. That's what your outside unit is going to look like. You have to go and find a suitable place where you're going to put it. That's going to be the inside unit. And uh, I made a little bracket to mount the, the unit on and I'm going to sit it on top of my shop office and it kind of uh, we'll, we'll move the cool air across the shop. Here's the hose kit, 25 foot long, very flexible, can move, bend pretty tight. Uh, it has the copper ends on it that's, uh, you know, like fittings, they've attached that. Uh, the condenser unit comes pre-charged, so you don't have to buy any refrigerant oil or anything. Well, what I was doing, I was thought, well, it needs to be mounted on the outside wall. And uh, so I was going to put it over there, but that was going to involve removing some shelves and all that, and I didn't want to lose the shelf space in the shop. So I started scanning around, and what I decided I was going to do was mount it right there on the top, right above the shop office. I felt like that would come in handy and be a pretty easy install. can run my lines across the top of the shop there. And I've already uh, drilled a three and a half inch hole uh, through the uh, plywood on the inside. And so now I have to match up my hole on the outside so I can run my lines out. Well, I've looked at it and I've measured it and I looked at it and measured it. And I, I did that about a half a dozen times. So now I feel pretty confident on my mark. Uh, you want your outside hole just a little bit lower, you know, maybe a quarter inch. Uh, from the inside uh, because I've got a rib on the outside of the building I'm gonna scoot it over a little bit and I don't anticipate that being a problem because those hoses are so flexible well that seemed to work out pretty good I took the time to measure and my holes line up pretty good there's a sleeve that slides in through this hole that kind of works as a guide to run your lines through, so I'll get that installed next. Well, I'm going to put some caulk around this to kind of help air keep it out between the two areas here. Well, I've got the uh, hole drilled, the insulation sprayed back up in there where the hole saw kind of tore up the insulation a little bit. Um, getting ready to run the hose through the hole up there. And uh, so this is how I'm starting. If you look down here, 
by the unit. Let me get closer. That's my bracket that I built uh, so I don't have to mount it to the wall. I can mount it on top of the room up there. Uh, that's what I was building the other day. Something I bought as a separate kit is like uh, the hose guard kit. Uh, it's when the hose comes out of the building or house and you run it down the wall, you can enclose the hose inside this housing. Uh, it looks a little better, kind of keeps it enclosed and all that. Well, here we are. I got the uh, lines run to the outside, and right below that's where the uh, AC condenser unit's going to be. And uh, so that's going pretty well right there. I'm pretty happy with this so far. The upper unit's going to sit up there on the uh, top of the roof or the ceiling of the office up there. Um, it looks pretty good up there, balances pretty well. I'm going to set it over a couple of ceiling joists. And uh, but for right now, I'm going to leave it loose till I get my outside unit connected, and that way I'll know how far uh, I need to pull the hose back. And if I do that, well, I'll move the uh, unit a little closer to the center of the shop. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the electrical. I am not an electrician, and I don't pretend to be. I know enough to do a lot of home repairs. Uh, but we're going to talk about the breaker require requirements. You're going to have to look at your unit to see what the amp draw is, and you're going to have to size your breaker and your wire for to meet those requirements. Uh, a little bit about breakers. Uh, what I have is a square D box, so of course you're going to put square D breakers in it. Uh, but if you look on that breaker, you'll see the letters H-O-M. All right, any breaker that you put in, as long as it has that H-O-M, you know, you've got GE boxes, you've got all different kinds of boxes, you've got store brand boxes and all that. And uh, so your big key on which breaker that fits it, uh, every breaker manufacturer is going to put a code on there like that. So uh, if you get ready to uh, go buy a breaker, pull your phone out, take a picture of your breaker, and that way you'll get the correct one. We're going to be getting ready uh, to hook up the electrical to the outside unit, the condenser. So you're going to make sure your breaker is off that supplies the power to your unit. And extra precaution, turn your main breaker off. Well, something that I installed that wasn't in the kit was this hose guard and uh, it really tidies it up makes it pretty slick uh, your outside disconnect box I've also added that Here on the side of the condensing unit, this is where all your electrical connections are. Uh, you've got your power the connections that come in here. And uh, down here at the bottom is uh, where all your refrigerant lines tie into. Uh, when you install those, you do want to be sure and check them for leaks and all that. Uh, it uses an O-ring type connection. Well, there's my bracket that I built, uh, mounted the unit to it. Pretty much just had to lay the hose right there on top. Condensation hose, I just had to put enough slope in it so whenever it dropped off, uh, water would run down the hose and not get caught or puddle up inside of it. On the evaporator unit, a little neat function that it has. It's got a little LED light up there that shows what temperature you have it set at and uh, that's nice if you're across the shop over there or across the room. Uh, you'll be able to see what you have it set at. You've also got a little handheld remote. It's got several functions. 
it'll show the temperature and all that uh, you can control fan speed uh, you know whether or not you want it on heater or if you want it on AC uh, temperature control it has a timer on and off sleep mode a neat function it has a swing and if you watch those louvers If you see that, it kind of oscillates, which is a nice function. It kind of helps either spread the the cooled air or heated air in the uh, room. But if you want to stop it, you just press it again and it'll stop. Uh, if you don't want to see that LED light, you can turn it off at the remote. Uh, it has a, a turbo mode. If it's really hot or cold in here, you can put it on turbo. And uh, that's a neat function. Well, something that I'd recommend doing whenever you uh, decide you're going to get one of these units is uh, have a good idea where you're going to put it in advance. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, prepare to run your electrical. Uh, if you know the size unit you're going to get, you can go ahead and size your wire and everything and your breaker. And you can actually run it like I did before I started. I, I knew I was going to set it up there above the shop and I knew where I was going to set my condenser so I was able to put my breaker and my power wire running it and uh, had it ready to go. Overall the time that it took me to install this unit because I would kind of been prepared to do it, uh, it took like six hours. So anyway I didn't feel like that was too bad and uh, it was well worth the time. Well, that's how I installed my AC unit here in the shop. Uh, I'm fixing to go to town. Uh, I'll come back and see what uh, temperature it's gotten down to, you know, in a couple hours. Uh, I am really happy with the unit so far. Really happy. Um, it's going to make uh, life in the shop in the summertime a lot better. Well, guys, I appreciate y'all coming by the shop and watching this installation. Uh, with that AC in here, I plan on doing a lot more projects here in the shop. These 100 degree days, they, they've been tough here lately. And it's just kind of been hard to get energized to come out here. But now with that AC, it's like being on holiday. So anyway, this is Rusty Glove Box. Thanks for watching, and I'm out of here. Hey, let's go over here.